I'm about to buy my highest income producing Airbnb ever. But it's also by far my riskiest. That can leave me with nothing. Yeah, man, so you're gonna have a pretty high tax bill this year. We can do a cost segregation on a new property, but you need to spend about a million dollars. A million? Okay, how long do I have? Uh, like now. You need to close before the end of the year, and it's already October. Crap. Today's video, we're partnering up with accountability, a tax and accounting firm. All right, so I just spoke with my tax accountant, Kevin, and apparently I'm gonna owe a lot of money to the IRS this year for taxes, which obviously is not good. So a way of offsetting that is to buy an income home and to do a cost segregation so I can write off about 200 to $300,000 in taxable income. But we have a problem. First, we owe too much taxes to the IRS and we need to reduce it. Obvs. Second, the housing inventory is still relatively low and the price points that we're looking at it's not good. And then third, we are really short on time. As of right now, it's October 9th. I need to find and buy a place by December 31st, which leaves me 83 days. Closing will take a minimum of 30 days and then 15 days of due diligence and negotiations. And then any additional upgrades we want to do to the properties, another 30 days, which leaves us only eight days. And random stuff always comes up. That leaves us with only four days to find a property. <sighs> I've got some searching to do. So this is what I'm gonna do. The next four days, I'm going to set up my agents. Second, I'm doubling down and scouring the interwebs for active properties for sale. Then narrow down the top three properties and put in my offers. Once accepted, I'll fly out to look at the property and do the inspection. And then five, close on the property and be done. You know what? I actually think that it's not gonna be that tough. If I get the right team together, I've got four days I can focus. Yeah, this should actually be pretty easy without any major hiccups. So for my next land hack project, I'm looking into three key areas. The Olympic Peninsula in Washington, Mount Bachelor area in Oregon, and then Hill Country of Texas. Hey, how's it going? So I made calls to friends in my network to connect me with the top agents in each of these areas. Boom, that's not so bad. Now they'll just email me everything that matches my criteria, including their pocket listings. Now my criteria consists of this, at least two acres, a primary dwelling structure is built with permits, it cannot be residential zoning, and it's close to attractions, and most importantly, unique with a wow factor. Day two, I wake up and I immediately check my inbox and start looking at properties on Zillow. All right, so I like to set up my search parameters and alerts. I like to draw my boundaries around the areas that I know versus just searching for a particular city or location. This way I can group in areas that I actually wanna be searching in that might fall outside of certain cities. Okay, so now I've got a handful of great listings from my agents and also doing my own search through Zillow, Redfin, and Realtor. And after sorting through all of them, 90% of them don't meet my criteria, except for these three here. One from each of the areas. Now I need to do a deeper market and property analysis on each of these. Remember, I still wanna make money and also just have a cool project that I can document for all you on the YouTube channel. Now I also teach how I do my full market analysis and running the numbers before dropping a million dollar offer sight unseen in our Land Hacker program. We also discuss deals and double check our analysis all the time with our community. And if you are at all interested, you can set up a free 20 minute call with me or my team to see if you'd be a good fit. And if you're not quite ready for a call with us yet, definitely check out my free workshop link down below right next to that subscribe button. Aiming for 100K by the end of the year. Let's do it. All right, so after digging deeper, only two out of those three listings actually made sense. The Olympic Peninsula is out of the running. Numbers don't really work out. Now, if I had more time, I would probably wait for more more listings to hit the market, but I don't have the luxury of time right now. So I'm gonna call my agents right now and I'm gonna put in two offers and see what happens with each of those properties. So the offers are in and we already got responses. The one in Oregon was not budging since they reduced their price a few days ago, which is fine. The one in Texas is open to playing ball. Now they were originally asking 1.2 million and we got it under contract for 1.05 with 10 days due diligence, which cost me an extra thousand dollars, but it'll count towards the purchase price if we end up buying it. So. It looks like we're headed to Texas, which is a huge bonus because I love the area. I went to school there and two of my closest friends live there too. It's 10 o'clock exactly in the evening and we're at the airport. 
because we've got to get to Austin, rent a car, and get on site at the new property all within the next eight hours. And we're still in Portland and we've got a layover in Chicago. Once we landed in Austin, we jump in our rental car, which was a brand new Corvette, and I headed out to the property. All right, I wanna take a quick moment and tell you about a secret that helped me save and make a lot of money to a point where I was able to quit my day job in my 20s. It was understanding taxes. Now imagine not having to legally pay taxes just because you have a good strategy, all the while you're making more money. That's what happens when you work with tax professionals and strategists, or you just understand tax laws and tax codes inside and out. And with tax season just around the corner, I wanna invite you to work with accountability, a tax and accounting firm. Full transparency, this is a company that I'm a part of because I actually love what they're doing and they've been doing my personal business taxes for the past 18 years. But there are true masters with real estate investments and entrepreneurs running businesses. That's their niche. Now, we can even do cost segregation for you to take advantage of bonus depreciation. And if you don't understand what I just said, <laughs> I don't blame you, but set up a free call with my main accountant, Kevin, and he can get you all squared away. Link down below. Now, I'm really excited about this particular property. The other listings that I was looking at, they weren't too bad either. Some had great architecture and beautiful views and much larger acreage. However, this place, you're gonna wanna see the difference for yourself. So this is the plan why I'm here. Walk the property to see if I can enact the vision I want, land hacking it. Talk to a lawyer about the deed restrictions, meet with an appraiser, and conduct a full inspection with the team that I hire. Customers are craving a really unique space in this market, and I intend to build it for them. We're tucked in between great vineyards, travel destinations, and wedding venues. And once we're done, this place will be one of the most interesting properties in the entire area. And this place has everything going for it in terms of difference and that wow factor. I mean, it's built into a hillside and has giant concrete dome interior ceilings. The bones are great and it has an even cooler story that we can design around and tell guests. I already have a vision and conservatively, it will be a free property and reach break even each month, which will be around $5,000. But more realistically, once we get everything going, I'd expect between 10 to $15,000 a month just off the main home. Then we're going to build a bad elevated home above the treetops in the back corner of the property. Here's the magic. Not only will we have this awesome piece of property in our portfolio, but we'll create roughly $500,000 of equity and generate 15 to $20,000 a month in rental income in less than a year. And everything was going well as I was planning where to put the new sites. And then I met with the appraiser and he tells me that this property is really unique, which sounds good, but is not a good sign at all because it leads to challenges of finding comps in the area, which then will lead to lenders not wanting to lend on it. Then when I didn't think things could get worse, the second gut punch came. As we were walking through and inspecting the home, we realized that this was a horribly done flip. This is what the home looked like before. And even though this may look like an improvement now, no codes were followed, meaning the electrical was done backwards, literally, and poses a fire hazard. The plumbing doesn't even have vent stacks, meaning that toilets don't flush, and the finished work is well below average and was honestly done by amateurs. The majority of the work has to be ripped out and redone. And now we have some real issues. Can we even get financing on this property? What does that mean for future resaleability? And then how much is it going to cost me to fix everything? This is a really sucky position. And this is why no one can or wants to buy this place. Silver lining is we can now go back and negotiate a much lower price and I can start building some real equity in this place. If I play my cards right. Subscribe and join me on this journey if you wanna see my next video where I start to show you how I went back to renegotiate the price, battle with no less than a dozen banks and lenders to finance the project, and what I'm doing to turn this place into this.